delicious. And I spent 25 years in hotels and restaurants in this area. And one of the uh, barometers of a good restaurant in this area in those days, and even today, is still, do you make a good crab cake? So we're going to make a crab cake recipe today. We're going to do a soup today. We're going to do something different with the crab cake recipe once we have it done. And we're also going to make a crab appetizer. So before we go any farther, I want to talk about different kinds of crab meat. So what everybody is familiar with in this area for crab cakes is usually blue crab meat. Now, Maryland is known for having some of the best blue crab meat in the world. And it comes in fresh. It's only in season from like April to September. And um, it's very expensive. It is the best though. So you get what you pay for. The crab meat is also sold pasteurized and fresh and pasteurized is what looks like this. So that's, you'll see that in a grocery store you'll see cans of crab meat. Now this is pasteurized, but it still has to be refrigerated and it has like a six month shelf life. This crab meat is actually from China and it's called red crab meat. So this is another version of a grocery store version. This is what we're gonna to use to make our soup. This is a pasteurized version of claw meat and you'll see that. So one of the things that how crab meat is sold is by size. Now I do up a little thing here of where crab meat comes from for you. Claw meat, white meat, which is usually special meat and it's real fine and has more shells. Lump has bigger pieces. And jumbo lump is actually the two big muscles here that control the swimmers. And that's what you're gonna see when we make our crab cake. So when somebody says it's a jumbo lump crab meat, crab cake, it should have lumps in it. And unfortunately, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they'll buy jumbo lump crab meat, but they'll over mix it. So you're taking all that money and you're breaking it up in small pieces. You might as well buy the inexpensive stuff if that's what you're going to do. So real quick, I just want to unveil this. This is our can of lump crab meat. That's what it should look like. Now I was lucky. I got this from a local grocery store. It's called Petite Lump. So it's not quite as big as the jumbo lump that you're gonna see in some places, but it's usually very much shell free. Uh, and you can see it's nice. And this was $15 a can, all right, which is not bad. But if you would go on to buy uh, a bigger brand name, say like Phillips, which is also a very good quality, but even their crab meat's not from Maryland. A lot of times they're pasteurized is from the Philippines or Thailand. Um, it might be 30 or $35 a can. So if you want to buy crab meat like this, restaurant quality, I'm going to give John Gross a pitch here because you can walk into the grocery store. It's called the Marketplace up at their headquarters on Sherrill Avenue in Mechanicsburg. And you can get a can of crab meat. And they have a variety called Super Lump, which is in between lump and jumbo. And that's a great crab meat if you're going to do small things. So... Real quick to get started, I'm gonna put some gloves on. I'm gonna make the sauce for my crab meat. And it's very easy. It's, this is one pound, so it's one egg, that's all. And then I have here some lemon juice, Worcestershire, and Tabasco. And I also have some dry mustard and some dried parsley. You could use fresh parsley if you want, I don't just because um, it's got to be consistent. And then this is one cup of good mayonnaise. I don't use store brand mayonnaise. I use Hellman's. It's worth it to pay the extra dollars. And then this is one tablespoon of Dijon. This is actually the secret. This is what makes it a good sauce. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna whisk it till it's smooth. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of Old Bay seasoning. Old Bay seasoning is the key to a crab cake. I kind of go by 
color and taste. So I didn't add any salt. Old Bay is very high in salt <clears throat> and I didn't add any pepper other than Tabasco sauce. So there we go. I'm gonna mix that up. There we go, it looks good. Okay, so for our crab cakes, I'm gonna put some gloves on because one of the tricks is if you can see the plate where this crab meat's at, there's a lot of liquid on it. All right, I don't want all that liquid in my crab cake because it makes my crab cake wet. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze it just a little bit when I put it in here. I'm gonna try not to break up any of the lumps. Okay, it looks good. And as I get to the bottom, I just kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze because I want to get rid of that excess liquid. I know it may sound like it's flavor and it is, but if it's wet and sloppy, you're not going to enjoy it. So this is this is actually interesting crab meat. Like I said, it's small lumps. It's called petite lump, even though the can says jumbo, but that's what it is. And I'm just going to drain this just a little bit. And then I'm going to put that in there. So that's one pound of crab meat. What I have here is a little bit of sauteed onion. I saute this ahead of time. And I do that because I don't want to put raw onion in. I want it to be cooked. You have to remember this crab meat is already cooked. You could eat it right out of the can if that's what you wanted to do. So my next thing is to put the sauce in. When I put the sauce in, I don't put it all in at one time. I put about three quarters of it in. And what I want to do is fold it. And that's the key. I'm just going to turn my bowl and just fold it so that I don't break up the lumps. Ta-da, just like that. Now that looks a little wet. Well, it is. I want it to be that wet. So to pull it together, I have some panko breadcrumbs. And I'm just going to put them in. I have here a half a cup. I don't know if I need a half a cup. I need to have enough to absorb the sauce. So that you need some type of binder. Some people say, oh, it's filler. No, it's not filler. You need something to hold it together. All right, and if you let that sit for just a couple minutes, the breadcrumbs will absorb your excess sauce. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. So we're going to let that sit. This was, everything was pretty cold, but in all honesty, and if you have a little extra sauce, save it. And I'll tell you why later on. Okay, so I, like I said, I never add all the sauce at one time. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to set that back here. And we're going to make our versatility with our crab cake mix dish in just a few minutes. The next dish we're going to make is a soup. And what I'm going to use for that is a claw crab meat. Now, this is not what I would use to make a crab cake, but for a soup, it's fine. Okay. Claw crab meat has a little bit of a different flavor. If you don't like claw crab meat, you could use something like a back fin or a lump if you'd rather have a more of a white crab meat. So I have here a stick and a half of butter. And I'm going to put in one cup of diced onion, one cup of diced celery. I'm just going to saute this. Again, the key is make sure that everything is cut the same size. 
the soup we're making today is a corn and crab bisque. So I have here some fresh corn off the cob. Now you could cook it and cut it off the cob if that's what you want. I actually like it fresh because I want the flavor of the corn to go in it. I have here some crab stock. And I say, Chef Tom, where do you get crab stock at? You know what? It's really hard to get crab stock unless you're cooking live crabs. So that's a hard thing to do. So this is where you kind of have to step in. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to just promote John Gross, but it's somewhere you can walk in and buy a container of crab base. It's very expensive. This is about $18, but it does for five gallons of stock. And it lasts about a year in your refrigerator. So if you're going to go good stuff, you need good product. If I could get my own fresh crab stock, I would, but I'm not cooking live crabs. So you have to kind of adapt. So we're going to let that cook up. I also have here a little bit of flour, some cream, some sherry wine, and a little bit of wine. And then this is a new product on the market. It's called Old Bay Hot Sauce. I know it sounds good, doesn't it? So it is what it is. It's, a, it's got a little kick. And we're going to use some of that in our soup. So I'm going to get this started. What I want to do is sweat my vegetables, pull some flavor out of it, and then I'm going to make a roux with the flavor from the vegetables. So um, Old Bay Seasoning is a brand name of McCormick. Uh, it's one of, it's, uh, there are other recipes out there, crab boil, that kind of stuff. Uh, in this area, it's kind of what we're all used to. Uh, it has a very significant flavor. If you don't like it spicy, just put less in. If you'd rather not put it in at all and serve it on the side, a lot of people do that where they'll make the soup and they'll put the Old Bay on the side and then you sprinkle it in to make it as spicy as you want it. Not a bad idea. All right, we're starting to cook up here. All right, I got a good heat going. All right, so I'm gonna take my flour, I'm gonna mix it in there, and this is Wonder Flour. It's a very fine milled flour. I'm going to make my roux. One of the tricks to making a good cream soup is to saute your vegetables. If you're making mushroom soup or broccoli soup, saute it in your butter. Add your flour to make a roux to get the flavor. It'll go all the way through your soup. Now I have here the crab stock. This is one quart of crab stock. Well, we said there might be some fire. I just didn't know it was going to be today. Okay. So we're going to let that come up to a boil, but real quick, because as it comes to a boil, it's going to start thickening. I actually want to add my corn, because my corn is raw. So I have here four cups of fresh corn. And as that comes up to heat, it's going to cook the corn. The corn doesn't take long to cook. If you've ever worked with cornstarch to use for thickening something, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't take very long to cook. It's almost instantaneous. So as that comes up, we're going to let that cook up. We're going to keep stirring it. I wanted to show you a little trick here. I husk my corn, and then this is actually what we call a corn brush, because no matter how much you husk the corn, you can't get the silk off. So as you're washing the corn, you go over, up and down, and that pulls the majority of the silk off. You'll never get all of it off, but you'll get most of it off. So as this starts to come together, my stock was not, if my stock would have been like boiling hot, this would start to thicken really fast. So I'm gonna pull off some items here. I have here also green onions. I'm gonna use that as a garnish for my soup. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know I like to garnish my soups. 
I have here a little bit of sherry. I want to put a little bit of sherry wine in there. This is cooking sherry, not sherry that you buy at the state store. The difference is sodium content. So this is very high in salt. Now let that come up to temperature. As it starts to come up to temperature, it should start to thicken. And then at the very end, I'm going to add a little bit of cream. I'm going to add my crab meat right at the end. So real quick, I'm going to go through my crab meat just to make sure I don't have any debris in there. And it's really easy to do. You said this is claw meat, so it's going to have some bigger pieces. And this is a chicken of the sea brand, which is actually a pretty decent brand. It's a little more high priced, um, but you always want to have gloves on. And you can see this is an eight ounce container of claw meat. And I think it was on sale for, I think I paid $7.99 for it. So that's not too bad to get a pot of soup out of it. And you'll get a crab flavor. All right, so looking good there. We're letting this cook as it puts, comes together. So while we're doing that, we're actually gonna start another dish because I can, I always have my daughter back into the corner. So we're gonna let this, turn this down because it's gonna come together. So I was lucky enough years and years ago, I know I've always told you that I was a recipe contest junkie. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, the recipe I'm gonna do. It actually was a crock pot recipe. And back in 2005, they had a contest where Rival Crockpot wanted to get some professional chef ideas. So uh, they had a, created a, a contest to, to get chefs to participate. So I saw it. The grand prize was a trip to Italy. I thought, what the heck, a trip to Italy? So I never cooked with a Crockpot before. It was something uh, my wife had always done. I always kind of thought, ah, it's a Crockpot. So Got my pan hot, I'm gonna add my olive oil. So this recipe is called warm blue crab bruschetta. So my pan's hot, I have some diced onions, I'm gonna put that in. Anyway, uh, they had two categories to enter this contest. One was a traditional home type food and one was easy entertaining. So I worked, spent all my time working on this, uh, doing shish kebabs or kebabs in a crock pot. Uh, to enter. So I entered that recipe and the deadline came and it was midnight and I was sitting here at 1130. I didn't have an entry for the easy entertaining. So I put together a recipe in my head and this was the recipe. It's called warm blue crab bruschetta. And I'll tell you the story about how I fared as we go along. So bruschetta or bruschetta, depending on if you're Italian or how you like to say it. You know, Mario says bruschetta. Um, is usually cold. Because this is hot, because it would be made in the crock pot, what I did was I peeled my tomatoes. And we talked about peeling tomatoes last week. Take the core out, you put an X in the bottom, you drop them in hot water, boiling water for just 30, 30 seconds to a minute to get the skin to come off. And then that's all you got to do. So picture this as the crock pot. This is actually the stovetop version of this recipe. So I'm going to saute my onions up. So my tomatoes are cut up, right, into like half inch sized pieces. The seeds are gone. Now, if I was going to make this cold, I wouldn't take the skin off. But the fact that I'm cooking it, I take the skin off because the skin's going to come off in the cooking process and it doesn't look as nice. All right, so that's our olive oil. We got our onions. It's starting to sweat. How's our soup coming along? Looking pretty good. Just got to get the temperature up to get it hot, get it thickened. So I'm going to add my tomatoes, just like that. Now all the products that go in here, again, I'm going to mix it up. Now traditionally, bruschetta or bruschetta has garlic. So we're going to put some garlic in there. I like a little oregano in mine, even though I know it gets fresh basil. 
I like dried oregano in mine. A little bit more oil in there. And then this calls for just a little bit of sugar. Okay. And then of course, you can't live without fresh ground salt and pepper. Really important, especially in a dish like this. Turn that over. All right, and then we're going to add some balsamic vinegar. Now, this is what you would put in the crock pot if you were going to make it, just like this. So this gets cooked on low on a crock pot. So basically, all you're doing is letting all the flavors blend together. It smells good. All right, so I don't want to go. I don't want to go too far to reduce it. So I'm going to pull that off, just because it's not in a crock pot where you would have a lid to control the steam and evaporation. So what I'm going to do next is add some crab meat to it. So this crab meat is actually back fin. So back fin is a grade between special and lump. And you can see, and I couldn't get a small container of lump at the store or I would have bought that because I don't want it as shredded as this is because I want it to look nice. Actually that petite jumbo would have been great for this dish. So again, I don't feel any shells. The chicken and the sea product is pretty clean. So I'm going to fold this in. And this is something that you could serve for an entertaining for a party. Again, I don't want to break up the lumps. I want to try to keep it big. So we're just going to go back over to the stove. Just give it some heat, and then I'm going to pull it off and add fresh basil to it. Basil goes in last. You don't need it to cook it. It's an aromatic. Okay, we're just going to make sure we get it up to temperature. Give it a super stir. Coming along. Not quite there yet. All right, make sure we get some heat there. Now what I did to serve with this is I made some crostinis. And crostinis are basically a baguette that you slice at an angle. I spray them with a little bit of olive oil vegetable spray, the pump, and then I put a little bit of garlic seasoning on top of them. And then we toast them in the oven. Once you have them cooked like this, they'll last for days and weeks. So we're gonna use that for our presentation. All right, that looks good. Okay. Just wanna give this a stir real quick. Starting to come together a little bit. We're not quite there yet. Now this could be a appetizer that you would serve at the table. You could do it individually. It was designed to be in a crock pot. And then you would put your crostini around it. Which we're gonna do. I just wanna clean that up a little bit. Okay, just like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my basil right now. I'm 
And this was all from my basil plant that I had brought home from uh, the beach. Okay, our soup is cooking. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Going to chiffonade my basil. Chef, while you're doing your basil, we had a question that came in from Jennifer. She wants to know what temperature does she need to bake the crostinis at to get them crisp? I do 350 for about 14 minutes. And each type of bread, uh, this is like this is more like a ciabatta because you can see it's kind of um, has a lot of holes in it. So every bread is a little different depending on what the structure of it is. So some will brown up a little quicker. And actually, folks, I'm going to do it this way because I want to make sure that I get my basil mixed in. So, but they are very, um, like I said, you can do them, like if your event is tomorrow, you could make your crostini today. And mix it up, it's very simple. And all you gotta do is keep them in, in like a Ziploc bag and they will last for a good while. All right. Gonna let our soup simmer just a little bit. Now this topping, like I said, it meant it was traditionally designed to be an appetizer. You could serve this over top of royal flounder or Chilean sea bass. There's a lot of stuff that you could do with it. So, and once it's made, just like that, you have about four or five days in the refrigerator. You can eat it cold. You can eat it hot. Okay, but it was designed for a crock pot recipe contest. And if you look at the book over here, I told you I would tell you a little bit of the story. That's my recipe on the front of the book, which is pretty amazing for um, a chef to be able to have their recipe. And then this is actually a book that came out and you can find it on eBay. Uh, they were selling them in like BJ's, but it's a combination of three books. And it says winter slow cooker recipes. That's my recipe with my name on it. And they only did it in that version of the book. Whenever they made the recipe again and published it, and it's probably been in about 10 different rival Crock-Pot cookbooks for Christmas. I found one in um, Five Below this past year. And when I opened it up, my recipe was in there. So for my friends, my wife's family and my daughters, I bought a bunch of them because they were $5 books. And I signed them and I said, your dad's recipe is on page 10. And I know 20 years from now, it'll mean something. So, so real quick while our soup's cooking, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with our crab cake mixture. Now, crab cakes can be done a lot of different ways. Uh, you can fry them, you can broil them. Um, one of the things about crab meat in the United States, if it's actually produced in the United States, is that if you get your crab meat from Maryland down to the Carolinas, crab meat is steamed. So it has less moisture in the meat. If you buy, and this is for fresh crab meat, if you buy fresh crab meat and it's from Louisiana, Alabama, there's a lot of liquid in the container it's because they boil the crabs instead of steaming them. That's just how they do seafood. So well, in my experience with working with crab meat, fresh crab meat that's boiled doesn't have as long of a shelf life because there's more moisture in it. And it's also coming from farther away. So if you have a chance, you can go to a seafood dealer. I know the West Shore Farmers Market has a seafood dealer. Ask him where the crab meat's from. If it's from Carolina or up through Maryland, it's good crab meat. Virginia also has very good crab meat. So what I did today, instead of making a crab cake, because kind of everybody knows how to make a crab cake, but if you didn't, 
one of the keys to making a good crab cake is making sure you get the right portion. So I always use an ice cream scoop because I don't like my crab cakes flat. I like it more of like a ball. And then I put them on like a sprayed pan with some melted butter over top of them and a little bit of paprika, put them in the oven. They, and remember the crab meat's cooked. So all you're really cooking is the sauce. So they get the right color. It takes about 25, 30 minutes at 375. So what we're gonna do here is I have a half a zucchini and I have this little tool and I just cut the bottom off so it lays straight. And I kind of want to scoop it out a little bit. Now this could be an appetizer, it could be an entree, very simple. And this is kind of a, you know, in the summertime, this is a nice dish in the summer because everybody eats a little bit lighter. So this is a combination of your protein and your vegetable at the same time. So I'm gonna bring over our crab meat mixture. So it's started to, as you can see, the, the panko kind of has absorbed now. So it's, a, it's definitely tightened up a little bit because panko is like a dried breadcrumb. So all I wanna do, and I'm just gonna use a little scoop here. I wanna make sure Tessa can see this. By the way, if you don't know, today my daughter is my camera girl again today, Tessa. And I'm just gonna put my crab cake mixture on top of my zucchini. And I'm gonna fire that off in the oven. And then once it cooks up, and you can see because it's nice and lumpy, it looks nice. If this was all shredded, right? It just wouldn't have as nice of a look. All right. And we're gonna throw that in the oven real quick. It's not gonna take very long, probably about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So while that's cooking, we're gonna go over and check out our soup. So also another tip for crab cakes, you see that that'll make about, um, if I didn't take out the filling for the zucchini, I would probably get six to seven of this size, a number 12 scoop out of a pound. So it's just my wife and I, we can't eat seven crab cakes all the time. So, so what I would do is freeze them. Um, I don't like to freeze them, but sometimes it's what you have to do. All right, our soup is coming along, it's very light. I'm just gonna add a little shot of half and half to it, just to give it some cream. And I might have to just tighten it up just a little bit more. So I'm gonna get it, I added some half and half so the temperature dropped a little bit. So we're gonna just, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So. Sometimes when you make recipes on the fly, you think they work, but they don't. So I'm gonna to need to add a little bit of what's called a slurry. So I could use cornstarch, but I don't wanna use cornstarch. I'd rather use a little bit of flour. So this is what's called a slurry. It's just um, the old time cooks used to call it a whitewash, but it's best if you put it in a container to mix it, you have less lumps. And then I'm just gonna add this. You can see it's a little pasty. Cause you have one shot to get this right. There 
Here we go. Now you see the difference. I pulled it together very nicely. It's not too thick. It's a bisque. It's not supposed to be like a chowder. The difference, one of the difference between a bisque and a chowder, a chowder has potatoes. A bisque traditionally does not. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit of our new product. I like the way that looks. I might actually use that as a garnish too. We'll have a little bit of Old Bay. We've got to have some Old Bay. So that's going to give us our Maryland crabs type flavor. And you see that's coming together pretty nice. All right. I like it. So I'm not going to put my green onions on. I'm going to use them as a garnish. My last ingredient is going to be our crab meat. Remember, this is cooked, so it's not like it has to go in to be cooked. So I want to put it in, kind of mix it up. I don't want to break up the pieces. And now that's where the crab flavor is going to come from. That looks good. Like I said, if you don't like claw meat, claw meat has a little bit of a different taste. It's a different muscle. If you want to spend the extra money and get lump, do it. Your soup is worth it. I wanted to show you making sure you use the right products of crab for the right purpose. All right, we're going to bowl this up. Okay. Good. Smells good. Now, if you've ever been to Maryland to the beach and you've ordered Maryland crab soup, generally what you're going to get is a vegetable soup that is made with crab meat. It, it usually has a beef based stock to it. So it's like vegetable soup, but it doesn't have beef, but it has beef stock. And then they put Old Bay and crab meat in it. All right. A little bit of green onion for color. And I like the way this holds up. So I'm just gonna put a couple drops of this. And then as you mix it, it gets spicy. That looks good. That's a good product. All right, so that is a corn and crab bisque with an Old Bay hot sauce and some fresh green onions. Let's just take a quick peek on our zucchini. Almost, not quite. So we have this dish. So when you want to do crab cakes with the recipe I have, you can do them in the oven. You can do them on a griddle. In other words, you can take, uh, like you could pan fry them or if you have an electric griddle, spray it, uh, scoop up your crab meat, just dust it a little bit of flour and, pan and sear them on both sides. They're kind of flat then. I like them more round, so that's why I like to bake them and broil them. And if you wanted, to, if you wanted them coated, you could coat them in like cornflake crumbs to make them look like they're fried, but they're not really fried. Or 
even fine breadcrumbs. Now you see this crab meat is like I said, it's nice and lumpy. So this actually, because the lumps are small, would be good for like a stuffed mushroom. If you would take the caps out, all right? Cause this isn't, this is, this is actually like a mix between super lump and jumbo lump. It's called petite lump and the price reflects it, but it's nice. This is actually from a red crab because it's from China. So it's not from the blue crab that we're used to seeing. All right, I'm gonna, my zucchini is just about ready. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it one more minute and I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on it. Because what would food be without cheese? And all this is is a triple cheddar blend. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that on and then let it melt. Any more questions? So when you go out to a restaurant and you're paying $40 for a pair of crab cakes, you make sure that you get good ones because the crew in the back has all to do with whether or not it's mixed correctly, whether it's shredded, even though they might be buying good crab meat, if they're mishandling it, it doesn't matter. Okay, a little bit of cheddar blend. This won't take long. Now this could be served as an appetizer or an entree. You could cut it up into pieces and serve it in front of people, but they could just take a small piece. You notice I didn't cook the zucchini. Zucchini takes very little time to cook and it's mostly water. When I went to the store this morning, I picked small ones too. I wanted to have not big, I wanted to have, because a big zucchini can be a little tough. The small ones where the coins are about you know, like that big, are perfect for doing what we're doing. So all we're gonna do for our plate, it sounds like it's ready. Here's a little bit of sriracha on it. Ah, yes. Now, if you take a look at that, just because I'm using good quality crab meat, you can see the lumps. That's how it should look. All right, you just want to see the pieces. It shouldn't look shredded. All right, this could be a $15 appetizer in a restaurant very easily. Okay, all I did was use the zucchini as a vessel for stuffing. Like I said, you could do mushrooms. Portobellas work really well for something like that. Artichokes, you know, would work really well. Same thing. You got to remember the crab meat part is expensive. So if there's any way that you can get more bang for your dollar, this is a vessel, this is a way to do it. All right, so there are three different dishes. Actually four if I made crab cakes, but I'm gonna take those and I'm going to portion them up and I'm gonna do something with them later. So, all right, Tessa, thank you very much. Gonna take questions if we have any. Hi everybody. Does anybody have any questions? Tessa's smelling everything. So I'm doing something different today. I'm actually doing this on my iPad because I wanted to see if I could get a, a little bit of a better picture quality. So um, I'll be curious to see how it comes out. All right, does anybody ever made their own crab cakes at home? It's 
So one of the things too I want to talk about is um, I talked every recipe today was made with what's considered blue crab, but it, if it's in China, it's called red crab, but it's the same size. It's a swimming crab. If you go to the grocery store, there's all different kinds of crab meat. You'll see king crab meat, snow crab meat. And basically what you, of course, what you get out of those are the legs. You don't eat the body meat. Where it's different with a swimming crab, you eat the body meat and the claws. Um, and the work is if you've ever gone crabbing and you've bought and you've had to cook crabs and pick them, it's a lot of work and it's not easy and it's a process. And um, so when you find shells in your crab meat, it's not a sin because it happens. One of the tricks in restaurants, if they buy a crab meat that's not the best grade, uh, they may take the crab meat and spread it out on a sheet tray and fire it underneath the broiler. I don't like to do that because it takes moisture out of the crab meat, but what it does do is it turns the shells white so you can spot them very easily. And it's an easier way to get rid of, make sure you don't have any shells. Because if you go to a really good restaurant and pay money for a really good crab cake, you don't want a shell on it. So do I have any questions I can answer? So I wanna say we're gonna be starting up back in the fall our first session is going to be geared towards students. We'd like to have them as many of them as geared towards students as possible. But it's going to be on August 27th. It's going to be how to wake up, uh, getting the right food in your body to learn and wake up correctly and stimulate your brain. So that'll be on August 27th. It's a Thursday, the first week of the semester. And then we're going to be announcing a new time and a little bit of a change of format with our shows. But we're excited about what's coming up. We want to try to get on. We kind of thought Monday, too, didn't turn out to be a good day for everybody because you get back to work and you got 100 emails to check and you might forget to check in and see what Chef's Tom is doing. So we're probably going to go to midweek uh, to a different time. Uh, we'll discuss it and pick a time that works so we can get as many people logged on because we have a lot to offer. And, uh, you know, food can be very educational. And that's the thing. As the seasons change, the recipes change. So you're doing different things all the time. Uh, and you eat differently. You eat differently in the summer than as you do in the winter. So, but thanks everybody for coming out. If you don't have any questions, thanks for being here. It's been great. This is the end of season two. So season three is coming at you. Stay tuned. Have a great day.